Hi, my name is Dr. Russell Betts. Welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Lab instructional videos. Today's experiment is experiment 11, entitled carbohydrates. Now carbohydrates, as everyone knows, is a, are a major source of our dietary calories. All the good things in life are made of carbohydrates. Potatoes, rice, pasta, bread, they're all made of carbohydrate. The word carbohydrate, or if you want to think about a carbohydrate, just simply think of sugars. Um, cellulose, amylose, those are two types of carbohydrates. Sucrose, table sugar, is a carbohydrate. Um, and they're, quite frankly, let's just admit it, they're delicious. Now in today's lab, we'll be learning the difference between uh, D and L sugars, we'll be talking about reducing sugars, we'll be talking about polysaccharides, we'll be talking about alpha glycosidic bonds, beta glycosidic bonds, and so on. Part one, We'll be uh, using what's called Benedict's reagent to determine if a sugar is reducing or not. In part two, we'll be looking at the formation of a disaccharide called maltose, which is two glucose monosaccharides put together. Part three, we'll be examining the difference between uh, two different polysaccharides. One will be amylose, which is the uh, carbohydrate that is found in potatoes and rice, and cellulose, which is found in cotton and uh, wood fiber. And in part four, we'll be examining the hydrolysis of a polypeptide. Now, a polypeptide is a large chain of carbohydrates put together. And when you hydrolyze it, hydrolyze means to cut with water or break with water. We'll be breaking the glycosidic bond using water. And we're going to find out what the result of that is by experimentation. So with that, I wish you good luck. And don't forget your safety goggles. Hi, my name is Dioni Antigua, and I'm a laboratory technician here at Bard College North Campus. In today's experiment, you'll be conducting a Benedict's reagent test in parts 1 and 4. Benedict's reagent is used to test for reducing sugars. In this example, we have Benedict's reagent in a drop bottle, two test tubes, one containing a reducing sugar and another containing non-reducing sugar. In this example, we have not labeled our test tubes, but you should label yours in lab. A hot plate that is currently turned on and a beaker containing water. To conduct the Benedict's reagent test, you will first start by taking one of the test tubes and adding 20, about 20 drops of the Benedict's reagent. Notice that the Benedict's reagent is a blue color. You will then submerge the test tube in the beaker. You will do the same for the second test tube. Add about 20 drops. submerge it in water. Allow the water to boil to get an accurate result. In part two of today's lab, you'll be drawing the monosaccharide glucose in your notebook. Here's the model of glucose that you'll be examining. Here's the oxygen that is in the ring of the Hayworth structure. And here is the anomeric carbon. As you can see, the oxygen that's attached to the carbon is pointing in the downward direction. That makes this an alpha glucose molecule. Here we have a model of maltose. Now, the model molecules are very complicated, and the models are kind of hard to read, especially for beginners, so don't be intimidated by it. Just look at it for what it is. It's simply a model of a complicated structure. So what, I, what you need to do when you're looking at any disaccharide or polysaccharide or, or whatnot, look for the anomeric carbons and look for the glycosidic bonds. So to find the anomeric carbon, you find the oxygen that's in the ring, and look for the carbon that's to the right. In your case, on the video here, it's in front of you. 
This is an anomeric carbon. Now the oxygen of the other ring is right here, and this is the anomeric carbon of the other ring. The one that really matters to us is the anomeric carbon that bears the glycosidic bond. Remember, the glycosidic bond is a bond, is, sorry, is an oxygen that connects two sugar molecules. So this carbon, oxygen carbon, this is the glycosidic bond. Now, taking a look at this carbon, it's the anomeric carbon that bears the glycosidic bond. Notice how this is angling to the downward position. This oxygen is angled downward. So this is an alpha glycosidic bond because this oxygen is angled in a downward direction. It makes this glycosidic bond alpha. It happens to be alpha 1,4 glycosidic. In part three of today's lab, you'll be examining the structures of amylose and cellulose. Both molecules are extremely complicated, and both molecules are very interesting. They're both polymers of glucose. However, amylose is completely digestible by humans, and cellulose is not. Now, like I said, they're both made of glucose, but there is one structural difference that differentiates them. Amylose, as shown here, I know it's very complicated, but, but try to work with me a little bit, is shown here. Here we have the anomeric carbon of one of the glucose molecules. So this is the glycosidic bond connecting two uh, glucose molecules. As you can see, the glycosidic bond is pointing down. This is an alpha glycosidic bond. Now, let's turn our attention to cellulose. Let me just move the model out of the way and replace it with a model of cellulose. Now again I'm very aware that these models are complicated. Uh, they'll be a little bit easier once you can hold them in your hand but even then they're complicated. Notice that I've removed a lot of the hydrogens to try to make it as simple as I can for you. Here we have an anomeric carbon. You'll have to just take my word for it. It's anomeric. Here the oxygen, you can see it, it's actually going up. This oxygen is going up. Here's the glycosidic bond connecting two glucose. The oxygen is going in an upward direction, not a downward direction. This is a beta glycosidic bond. So cellulose has beta glycosidic bonds and amylose has alpha glycosidic bonds. And that is the only structural difference. So when you come to lab, You'll want to examine this model carefully, find the glycosidic bind, bonds, find the anomeric carbons, and see for yourself the structural difference between cellulose and amylose, and notice the uh, different structure that they both adopt because of the difference in just that one bond. And today you'll be conducting an iodine starch test in part four, hydrolysis of a polysaccharide. Today we will be showing you what a positive iodine test looks like and what a negative iodine test looks like. First, we will start by adding a few drops of the iodine solution to the first well. Notice that the color of the iodine solution is a clear yellow. To the next well, we will add a few drops of the 2% starch solution using a pipette. We will now add a few drops of the iodine solution. Notice that the solution in the well has changed colors. It has turned a dark blue, almost black color. This represents a positive test, since there is starch present in the solution being tested. In the third well, we will add a couple drops of water, distilled water. And now we will test it using the iodine solution by adding a few drops.
notice that the solution in the third well is a negative test. Since there is no starch present in this solution, it will remain the yellow color of the original iodine solution. Here we have a magnification of the iodine starch test. In the first well, we are going to add a few drops of the iodine solution. Notice that the color of the iodine solution is a clear yellow. In the second well, we are going to add a couple drops of the 2% starch solution that you'll be using in today's lab. We are then going to test that 2% starch solution using the iodine solution. Add a few drops to the starch solution. As you can see, the color changes to a dark blue, almost black. This indicates a positive test, since there is starch present in the solution being tested. In the third well, we are going to add a few drops of distilled water using a distilled water bottle. We are now going to test the distilled water using the iodine solution. Notice that the color does not change. The iodine solution remains a clear yellow, indicating a negative test, since there is no starch present in this solution.